Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Rapid Fired Pizza National Series. And we are here to finish out the round of 12 to figure out who are going to be the eight drivers moving on to the next round in the playoffs. My name is Sam Dyer. With me is Warren Keith. And Warren, we're going road track racing here at the Roval. It's going to be a little bit tricky for these stock cars, but overall, it should be a fun race for these drivers. Oh, yeah, the Roval never seems to disappoint, no matter what car you're in. And the Roval is very unique. We can't say this enough how unique it is. Half oval, half road course, just condensed Daytona down, and that's basically what you got here. And with these Xfinity cars, it's going to be an absolute show tonight here on FRN. Yeah, we've got a lot of drivers hunting for a chance to move on to the next round. There are some drivers that didn't show up for today's race, and their chances for moving on are now out of contention. Chris, uh, Mc Chris uh, uh, Werder is actually going to be out of here for the two machine, uh, did not show up for today's race, was outside of the bubble, needing a win to move on, and that looks like to be one of the only drivers that did not show up out of everyone that is running for a chance to move on. Now, we do have a total of three drivers, and due to the fact of how many drivers actually didn't show up today, it looks like we moved that up to four drivers that have already made their way on to next round. Logan Heltzen and Barry Stevens have already won and moved on due to having wins points wise david centini is going to be locked into the next round and it looks like jeffrey meyer based off of points is going to also be able to move on forward uh due to the amount of points that are out there for a chance to uh move on but that off that can actually change for jeffrey meyer if he is dropped down to those lows, lower stages and one of the drivers that's trying to point their way in or win their way in does get a win here today as the drivers are starting off on their formation lap, we're going to take a quick look at where drivers are standing here on the grid. Starting on first place, we got Cole uh, Hooper and Logan Heltzen 1 2. And we were watching practice there, Warren, and it looked like Logan Heltzen was the most dominant car. Kind of a surprise to see the eight machine not getting the pole. Yeah, but he was consistent. And, you know, as I always say in the road course side of things, if. You know, you could do it for one lap, but you have to be consistent with it. So we'll see exactly what happens. But Logan Helton, he's very consistent, very smart with the driving. Watch for him to get out early. More drivers that are inside the top eight in points. David Santini, like we said, pointed his way in the next round. And also Evan Longacre. And Longacre kind of in that bubble stage. He's five points to the good, but he is that car that is on the bubble. And he's got being hunted down by Roger Gregory, who is the only other car that can point his way in. And we'll see Gregory later on in the grid. Tom Lane, Ville, Tim Williams. Williams, also another driver that is right on the cusp of pointing his way into the next round round but still needing a pretty solid day today and uh, go moving down now to seventh and eighth place got tj crampton and joshua gordon and gordon someone that is in a must win scenario and now the ninth place that's where we have carson bowers and behind them you're going to have seven drivers that did not put on a qualifying lap but are going to be starting in the back and have to work their way forward yeah, and starting from the back here is not an easy picnic. Sure, there's only 15 cars, but at the same time, it's a picnic you do not want to attend. And also, it could be a picnic you want to attend. It's a, it's a double-sided coin. You have enough people go off or wreck ahead of you, you easily move up spots by just hanging out in the back and just driving safe. So far, looking at the drivers that are out there and getting ready to go green, it looks like Jeffrey Meyer will not be starting off with the grid of drivers that are on track. He'll be starting on pit road. So uh, a different strategy for the 38 machine who is hoping to be out there. And if we do not see Jeffrey Meyer out on track to at least start this race, it could be an issue moving forward as this is a uh, pace lap. That's why you're seeing the drivers just go through uh, and they could just cut by on that uh, chicane there but warren with it being here at the roval for 50 laps it's, this is a very quick road course for these drivers that they can be going through but it's looking like it's possibly going to be a one stopper for these machines if we stay green all the way through so you know these drivers are going to try to cut this thing in half but you know that some are going to try to overpass that halfway marker and some are going to try to stay back 
Absolutely, and they're going to do it in style. Field comes down into the final chicane. Pace car already hit the pit lane. We're getting ready to go here in the rapid fire. Pizza Grand National Series green flag is out through the chicane. Does everyone get through okay? Looks like they will. And already Logan Helton gets out to an early lead, but the double zero cuts back inside. Yeah, it's going to be Cole Hooper. Going to be going a little bit too hard in the wall already. Oh, no, the double zero. Not on the brakes enough. Already smashing the wall into corner number one. Gifting the lead to Logan Helton and dropping Hooper all the way back to seventh place. Now giving the BJ McLeod machines an easy one-two as the rest of the field are trying to scatter and figure out how to get by this double zero. Uh, just a little impatient there in turn one. You know, I don't think he realized just how on the brakes he had to be. And we see that in real life, too, uh, Sam. These drivers oh, get no! this in three around. There goes Gordon around in the back as he'll be dropping all the way to the back now. And more carnage for that 93 machine that was looking for a win here today and now hoping a caution will come out as we move back forward. And now you got Tim Williams and the double zero machine still on top of one another. This is a battle for sixth place. As Tim Williams, a driver that's looking for a solid day, just needing to finish in the top 10 and most likely will move on to the next round. But Cole looking like he's ready to make a move here on the 19 as he's looking still a little impatient with the drivers he's in front of. I'd be impatient too. You know, you messed up the first turn and you want to get back into the groove real easy. So, you know, I don't, there's not much damage on the side of that double zero. He got really lucky into turn one. That heartburn turn can easily ruin your night. He's a passer position right ahead of him. And he'll try to take advantage of it. Nope. No, no. Cole into the wall again. Cole Hooper just not having the best of luck there in the first corner and continuously hitting the wall. As also Jeffrey Meyer, who is now a lap down more into the wall as well. He needs, he needs to breathe, take a sigh of relief, get back in the groove. That's the, that's the thing about road course racing. You can make mistakes. But you got to learn to get back in the groove and just forget about those mistakes and look forward down the racetrack. And that's what he's doing right now, trying to chase down the 16 ahead of him. He gets right loose and spins around. Oh, no! That's going to be Carson Bowers going around. The 16 machine, a driver that has been having pretty bad luck at road courses, and it looks like it continues as now he'll be looping it back around. This is only lap number two, and already a lot of issues for drivers that are trying to have decent days today to point their way into the next round. I'm gonna stop talking about some drivers every driver talking about. It's coming around this race. Not so even far. Your, we talk about it, we have them on camera, and, and then we just see issues going around them. It's wild to see. We're on board with Roger Gregory now, who's trying to run down Hooper. And Gregory, a driver that is right outside of the points, ninth coming into this race. He was five points away from Evan Longacre, and Longacre at the moment running up in third place. Another driver that possibly could get by, Kevin Roy, behind the 12 machine. Kevin Roy someone that we're used to seeing finish outside of the top 10 but it's most recently in the last couple of races been able to find himself in the top five for some of these finishes yeah and that's that's good consistency when you think about it but you know we haven't really talked about our leader much just since the start i know it's early in this race but he's already opened up to a nice comfortable 3.466 second lead and he's easily growing that out just a bit more don't get me wrong david century he's keeping the gap nice and honest as they head back up into the oval here at Charlotte Motor Speedway, but that 3.6 second gap is about staying true right now for Logan Helton. Yeah, Logan Helton really came into this race kind of the favorite after getting a win last week at Las Vegas, trying to carry that momentum forward. And really one of the drivers that we thought was gonna have a lot more wins uh, this season with five coming into this race and almost trying to catch up and tie with David Santini, his teammate with the most wins at seven. But I mean, this race already early on, early troubles for a lot of drivers but it looks like we're starting to see some racing action for that sixth place the 22 and the double zero once again close to one another yeah and cole hooper seems like he's been able to regroup cross my fingers as he heads into the final chicane 22 locks oh, up he's coming Here. up to like corner number one and this is where he's been seeing a lot of the issues so we'll see if he can survive this corner yeah but cole gave tj a bit of a oh he get, gets a little oh. there <laughs> I was gonna say, gave him a little bit slack through the final chicane. He could have taken the advantage there, but let the 22 go. It's early in this race, and uh, that was a lot of rear end damage to the 22 uh, TJ Crampton. This in there. Yeah, Crampton's got a lot of rear end damage. It looks like he might have some front right damage as well. But as we're on board with the double zero, with the racing action that we've been seeing from, oh, it looks he's like the 22 says he's gone. 
He's off. Hit the wall. He's going to get it back going. He does. Just we'll in front of Kevin Roy. We'll move back up. Roger Gregory now has caught up to the double zero after the woes that have happened for Cole Hooper. And, man, I, this is wild just to see the issues so far. Uh, more drivers that have been having issues in the back. Carson Bowers continues to have issues for that 6T machine. Looks like he's been spinning around more and more as now Jeffrey Meyer, who started on the pits, has now gotten by the 6T machine. Yeah, and Carson Bowers is missing the whole front end of that car. The camber's knocked out of it. He's having a tough night sitting in P16 as we have another car. I think I just heard it crash in the background. Yeah, that's Brandon Andrews in the 24 machine. That is Brandon Andrews right now, one of the drivers that was in a must-win scenario for that 24 car, and now running back in 14th, more issues for himself. And it looks like the, the must-win drivers of Gordon and Andrews both having early issues as they're now trying to catch up in side-by-side -side action for 12th place where you've got Tyner and Gordon that were side-by-side were -side coming into corner number one. Yeah, Gordon set up Tyner very nicely into the final chicane. Got him um, long side, show and go. 51 knew he was there, and the next thing is the 93's cut through. Very good passes. 51 runs wide in turn two as they go down to turn three and four complex. And we're now going to move up to where we have Tom Laneville coming up and catching Longacre at the moment. But as I say that, I think it might have been a, a pass, possibly. No, our telemetry was just off a little bit. It looked like Roger Gregory was about to make a pass there on Cole Hooper, but had issues spinning it around, and looks like he's got some front-end damage now for himself in that 12 machine. Yeah, and you know a lot of these drivers showing a little front-end damage. It's just been one of those nights here at Charlotte. But that 12 car, he's someone I'm watching. He's very good under braking, very nice on throttle. I say that, he gets a little wheel spin there off the backstretch chicane. But he's been pretty consistent and very nicely done. And if you can just keep that up, hopefully during this race, if that one stop does happen, he'll be able to move up a couple of positions. Yeah, I mean, Roger Gregory, at the moment, the car that he is trying to run down and do better than is Carson Bowers at the moment. That difference between those drivers is 10 points. And the difference in positioning right at the moment for those two drivers is, I uh, believe, doing some quick math, that's eight points difference that they are at. So right now, Roger Gregory needs to get up to at least sixth place, if not even further than that, into a top five position if Carson Bowers continues with his woes. Yeah, and the battle for third place is still sitting there and simmering as they head back onto the Oval Lawnacre and Landville. Two, uh, two city names down here in Florida battling up on the um, Oval here at one in uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway. But that 18 car has really been good under braking. The 10 car really easing oh. into his braking zones. Sorry to uh, come over you, but it looked like Roger Gregory about to make the pass on TJ Crampton gets loose while they're coming back onto the Oval as we will go back to that battle for third place, as you were saying. Yeah, and that I've said that 18 car has been a little better under braking. Uh, it seems like the 10 is trying to save his brakes a bit more than the 18, but that 18 car is very stout right now. Oh, 10 on the grass. Luckily, it's artificial. So he'll keep that position and keep it through the chicane here on the front stretch. So they go down the one. Now, we're starting to see drivers getting more split up than what they were at previously. As, as, as I say, that the battle for fifth place now starting to get underway as Tim Williams under fire by Hooper now. Um, but with the drivers getting more and more split, uh, spread out from one another, it's more of getting into that groove. But it, when, once you get off of your rhythm that you're in, Warren, I mean, how difficult is it to get back into the rhythm that you're supposed to be in out on these road courses? Oh, it can be very hard. You know, it's a lot harder than you would be if you're driving an oval. An oval, you could think about what you did last time by. But here at Road Course, you have so many corners to think about. You forget what you did wrong sometimes the last time by, and you might do it again. So it's very important that you get in a nice groove. And, you know, just flow through the corners, let the car do the work. Oh, TJ Crampton go. issues for the 22 machine, spinning it around. And going to be losing a lot of positions, dropping back from 7th place, now back to ninth as we now move back forward for that battle for 5th place. Yeah, and, you know, Cole has been a nice pass here for Cole. He got a good shot off the backstretch of the game, but he's been slowly working his way back up after those first two laps of uh, just terrible, <laughs> terrible luck for him. But he seems to have found that groove, and he's made nice passes and now moved the double zero back up to P5. 
More issues for the 22. He spins out again. It just looks like those tires way too heated up and now being difficult getting off the corner now. T.G. Crampton, that was, like we said, battling for seventh place. All the way back to 15th as he slides once again and trying to keep control. Keeps it off the wall for now, but it just woes for this 22 machine. Yeah, that 22 would be nice to come in and get some fresh tires because those rear tires are gone on that 22 car. And... He's going to have to come in eventually, but might as well just do it now, get tires, and try to see what else you can gamble on. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing about coming in for tires, it's kind of difficult for these drivers. you got to try to save it up. I mean, for these machines, they do have tire limits. They only have two sets. It's the one they start out with and one in pit road. So a lot of these drivers actually have to save it until that halfway marker to come to the pit. So if you're having early issues like we're seeing for the 22, it could really cost them later on in the race when they're just trying to stay with everyone else. Yeah, but he has to be smarter here, Sam. I mean, he's not going to be able to use that one set if he keeps driving like this as he's in the wall again. Oh, and that is going to lose most likely the front hood. Uh, somehow he keeps it, but uh, we're actually going to be moving up to the battle for ninth place as we've got ourselves Barry Stevens being hunted down by the 93 of Joshua Gordon. Gordon, we saw on the first lap, spinning it around, and more issues in front of him as it looks like that is Roger Gregory that spins it around in the 12. Yeah, and he gets it back going on the banking, but he's going to get swallowed up here in about a second by Joshua Gordon and uh, Barry Stevens as they come through three and four. As they're still running close and trying to make the move forward, Joshua Gordon within three tenths and has the potential, gets a good run through these last chicanes here, could be on the back bumper of the 78, gets off the final corner and just trying everything, but it's all about that exit off the corner and it just likes, looks like Joshua corner, Gordon on the final sector of this course just doesn't look like he's faster than Barry Stevens. It's on this first part where he really hits his marks and starts to move forward. Yeah, and at road course, especially here in these heavy stock cars, you need to save those rear tires. And for the drivers we've seen spin out so far, that advantage you have of saving that rear tire is gone. You are not going to be able to save that tire now for the rest of the run, as the 12 car now under fire from the 19 ahead of them. But two battles gone going through the, uh, the dipper here at Charlotte. So good battles all over the racetrack here from about P7 down to about P10. Roger Gregory, who has dropped back from sixth, now back to eighth at one moment, side by side with Tim Williams, trying to make this pass. But Williams says, this is my position as firing back is the 19 machine and looking like he's set up for this first chicane and will make the pass cleanly here. And it's all about staying calm, cool and collective. And that was a great move by Tim Williams, who continues to hold seventh place off from Roger Gregory. But Gregory's got to be careful now. He's pretty much just got to stay locked in and focused to not spin that car out again. Or he'll end up uh, overdriving like the 22 did. But he had a really nice entry into that chicane. Got back to the back bumper, Tim Williams, as they crossed the line. And see if he can close that gap to the infield. I doubt it with those hot tires. But we'll wait and see as he goes through turn one. Yeah, and with iRacing, the way that the tires, once they get heated up, it is so difficult to cool them off as Tim Williams getting very close to, that ex to the exit of that corner. Um, as those drivers are running close behind them, they're running hard as well. As it looks like Cole Hooper able to make the pass on the 18 machine, moving the double zero up to fourth place. Our pole setter, after the early issues of smacking that wall out of turn number one, has been able to now recoup and now back up to fourth place. Yeah, and that's a good re rebound there for Cole Hooper when you think about just what he's gone through in this race so far. So, good rebound for Cole. And when you think about it, he's not that far off Logan Helton compared to where he was half, a, half this race so far ago, but good move up for the double zero. And as we're talking about it on screen, Roger Gregory able to fight back on Tim Williams and looks like he'll be having this position for now. But I mean, these cars just look so equal compared to one another. Looks like Tim Williams might be able to fire back. He got a great exit out of that chicane. He's right on the back bumper of the 12. He'll try to set it up for the final chicane coming on the front stretch. Yeah, you know, he'll, he'll be he'll be close enough to get it, but the 12 car has been really good entering that final chicane and off the front straightaway down towards heartburn turn. 19, not close enough to make a move, but he's close enough to set him up for the infield, no question about it. And you saw there on our screen on the front stretch, that was Carson Bowers in the 16 that pulls it into the pits. A lot of front end damage for that 16 machine. Was hoping for a better day today and uh, just not going the way that he wanted 
uh, this final race of round of the round number 12 to go. Other cars that have pitted, the 22 of TJ Crampton has made a pit stop uh, and f finally able to start moving forward. It looks like actually he's just been sitting in pit road and his race is done. Finally disconnecting and parking that 22 machine. Yeah, there was a lot of damage to fix on the 22 car there for TJ. Unfortunately, that's what happens when your tires get really hot really quickly. And there's just no way of saving that car after that. The driver we haven't really talked about, that's going to be Matt Knight trying to run down and catch up to Barry Stevens. And he's doing a great job in that 0-1 machine. Not battling for any points at the moment, but just battling for position and momentum for next season. And Matt Knight doing a pretty good job right now as he just completely launches himself off the rumble strips there. I think he might have had all four tires off for a second. Yeah, and you don't want to do that too much as Tim Williams now having a problem as they, as they go by him at 3 and 4. Didn't catch what happened to 19, but he's dropped back now to P11. But yeah, you do not want to launch that car over the curbs too much. That could damage a uh, a, uh, a steering rod or anything like that. So you got to be careful here tonight and not get over those turtles. And as these drivers continue to run on, just like that, Roger Gregory back to 7th place trying to run down Kevin Roy. Kevin Roy, uh, a driver that has consistently, like we've stated, not really been having the best runs during the end of the regular season, but since playoffs has been hitting his marks just right to put himself in positions to move on to the next round. I don't know if Kevin Roy is really a challenger for the championship, but a contender to keep on moving throughout these rounds. He is still there in that four machine. Yeah, ooh, the 12 car with a big tanker slap onto the oval. But yeah, you know, consistency is where it needs to be. And, you know, even if he doesn't win the championship, he's got to be proud of himself for, like you said, not being the best early part of the season, but since the, uh, the playoffs started, he's really ramped it up, so he's got to be proud of himself just for that. Tim Williams once again smacking the wall and slowing down. I mean, it, we are seeing a lot of machines that have hit the wall very hard here uh, at different sect sections of this racetrack. I mean, at some point, your car is going to give up. I mean, yes, it, you're not looking for the best aerodynamics at a, a road course, but still you're hoping your car is at least in one piece by the end of this thing. And that's that's the downside about the track like this. You know, if you get any kind of damage like that, it's going to hurt you. Aerodynamics is a big thing here around these oval parts of the racetrack, so you don't want to damage it too much, but luckily these turns, at least on the chicanes, they're slow enough it's not going to bother you. Well, we're starting to move back up to the battle for sixth place. Roger Gregory has hit his marks and has caught up to Kevin Roy now. As Roy has not been having the best couple of corners, which the 12 machine has, as they are now bumper to bumper now. And four machine to Kevin Roy, it looks like he's under fire. As right now, look at the speed differences. I mean, Roger Gregory, when he's really hitting his marks, he's running about a, a second faster as everyone else, but car contact be between himself and Kevin Roy there, not expecting the four car to be so slow. Uh, that, that wasn't contact, that was a kiss, and it was a light kiss. Luckily for both drivers, they get away with it, but that's going to slow down Roger Gregory, and that, again, throws him off the groove that he was building, catching up to Kevin Roy. We'll see if he can regroup, re-establish uh, his grip and try to chase down the four car yet again. Now, Joshua Gordon looked like he had some issues, and now he'll be making a pass here on Matt Knight and moving himself up into ninth place. Uh, driver that we had stated needs to get a win here if he wants to move on to the next round, and it's not looking like that. There's a potential for that. Another driver has parked it for the day. That's going to be Carson Bowers in the 16 machine, a driver that was inside of the top eight but was needing at least the top 10 finish here today. If you wanted to make sure he was into the next round, this puts a lot of pressure on himself and also just makes it to where Roger Gregory needs to finish just in the top six, and he will be good to making it onto the next round. Well, that makes that position there against Kevin Roy all that more important, doesn't it? When you think about it, so that's a P6 position on the line, so he's really going to fight for this position now, even though it's still relatively early in this race. We're not even near halfway yet. But the points battle really heating up, and this position for P6 is something we're going to have to watch very closely. Uh, as we're going to take a quick look back at drivers that are running in the back, 
as we've got Brandon Andrews, the driver that is in a must-win situation, coming up to Aaron Tyner. As these two are battling, our leader Logan Helton is now here, and we're starting to see lap traffic now be involved with our leader. We have seen this previously at other road courses. Lap cars have been an issue for lead lap cars. We'll see if these drivers get out of the way, as it looks like Andrews going to run high, get out of the way for the eight machine, as it looks like Tyner now going to be holding his line as ooh, Logan Helton able to just cruise on by all Almost scraping the wall there, but uh, safely gets by those lap machines and will continue pushing forward for our leader. Helton's been flirting with that turn one wall, oval turn one wall each time he's came up there, but good move and good sportsmanship by Aaron Tyner and Brennan Andrews getting out of the way for the leader this early in the race. And uh, like you said, we're inching closer and closer to the halfway marker and our closest battle right now is this battle right here for 13th place. It's Aaron Tyner and Brandon Andrews going, battling it out for this 13th position. But as they continue to battle on, they got to watch out now because, oh, looks like Andrew says it's time to come to the pits as he'll be duck ducking it down in the 24 car. Coming in, this looks like this is a scheduled stop possibly for the 24 car. Ooh, that's early. That's early. Especially when you think about tires, that is an early stop. I don't think we're going to see a two stop today, but... Yeah, you never know. He's back, he's back in the field. Brennan Andrews might try a two-stop with tires. Wait and see, but here comes the 24 down into his stall. Taking it very nicely. Uh, pretty slow just to make sure he doesn't overshoot it. As we look to see if this is just a fuel or... Yeah, it's four tires. Four tires being put up for the 24 car. So all tires will be used for the 24 car at this moment. And he's going to have to now last 26 laps on those tires for that 24 machine as we're now going to be moving up for the battle here uh, for seventh, uh, actually, excuse me, for eighth place as Joshua Gordon is now starting to catch up back with Barry Stevens. And this battle is within seven tenths of one another as they're coming into the final chicane coming across the line. We'll see who gets off the exit better. It looks like Barry Stevens did there as Gordon was kind of on the rumble strips for just a little bit too long. Yeah, but these drivers keeping it nice and steady. No, I think these might be the only few cars on the racetrack with no damage, Sam. They've been able to keep it nice and clean and you know, easy on the tires. I would like tire. to say that they're uh, they're not damaged, but I'm pretty sure there's some scrapes on uh, at least the 93. I don't know about Barry Stevens. I think there might have been a, a tap here or there, but not enough for us to see from this far out in our camera view. I want to take a closer look. I believe there has been slight contact about these machines. Even if there is slight contact, they look good for compared to the most of the other field we're oh, seeing. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Everyone else is looking terrible because <laughs> they've uh, just these walls certainly have seen a lot of action here today. And we're not even at the halfway marker, but you know that just based off this first pit for Brandon and Andrews, I mean that is such an early pit stop compared to the rest of the field. We know for sure our leaders are most likely aiming for that halfway, if not past halfway. Uh, we might see some other drivers decide to short pit if they feel like they're battling with someone and they need to make get that advantage based off of tires there has been a tr major drop off on tires wise i mean this wear off for our leader that last lap compared to the best lap that logan helton has put down it's almost over three seconds difference for our leader just based on the tires drop off yeah and that opens up a whole nother can of worms saying when come down to the road course side of things is the undercut and if you're Davis Sentry and you know it's about a three second give up on tires compared to old, how early do you come down? Because he's only 5.4 back. If he comes down and pits a lap before Logan Helton, he'll make up that half that gap right off the bat. So you've got to think when when is the right time to come in for David and when is too too early? So he's really gonna be playing that game right now and pit before Logan Helton. The pass has been made for sixth place. Roger Gregory able to get by Kevin Roy and now the 12 machine aiming to try to catch up to Tom Laneville. And uh, R Gregory has been running slightly faster than Laneville. The only issue, the gap between both those drivers is 21.8 seconds. That is such a huge difference that I don't even know if he can really make that up here with how much laps are left in this race. Oh, he could. If he puts his head down and he puts in some consistent laps, gets a good pit stop he might get there by the end he'll just have to really you know tell himself i gotta push and i gotta push hard as we're looking at the different battles going on the closest one is this battle for 10th place where you've got three machines trying to hunt down tim williams in the 19 who looks like he's been just slightly off 
And the past five laps or so as the 19 machine was running at one point up in the top five and now has dropped all the way back to 10th place after so many runs and issues for Tim Williams. He isn't one of those drivers that was feeling good about points wise, should be able to uh, point his way in, but he was right on the barrier of just needing a decent day today to move on. It look, based off of where drivers are running now, the closest driver that could really just win and get into the next round would be Evan Longacre, but he was already inside of the good for our top eight. So there's no real drivers that really we're going to shake things up, except for Roger Gregory, who was hoping for someone in the bubble to have issues, and it looks like that driver was going to be Carson Bowers. Yeah, and speaking of Evan Longacre, he just missed the final chicane and gave up a spot to Cole Hooper. Cole Hooper back up to P3 after having a dismal start to the race. So move that driver back up. He's still 20 seconds back from the leader, but a good rebound there for the double zero and the 10 car a little bit off his mark right now. Yeah, Longacre needs to now reset, get back into that rhythm and start hitting his markers. If he looks back too far now, yeah, it might be, uh, if you make too many more mistakes, uh, Tom Laneville could be showing up as we will now drop back again to what was that battle for 10th place, Matt Knight having slightly uh, some slight issues for that zero one one has now dropped him too far back for this to be a battle as uh, Jeffrey Meyer now has caught up to Tim Williams and Brandon Andrews looks like he'll be slowing up the 19 just a little bit here now bringing the 38 and the 19 very close to one another into turn number one yeah, and the 38's made a good rebound he's been hitting his um, P's and Q's even though he started on pit lane he didn't get a caution he wanted but right now running P11 it's a good rebound for him as they go down to turn three and four 38 trying a different line than the 19. And he's going to get a run here if he keeps the throttle down. Gets a little and he, ooh, he was trying to keep it down there and still into it now. Let's see if the 38 gets a good run. Looks like he kind of did there. But that he's 19 has been able to pull the 78 around. Oh, Barry Stevens trying to hold that inside line and will just stay there letting other cars go on by. Barry Stevens, the driver that was up in 8th place, has now dropped all the way back to 11th, gifting 8th place to Joshua Gordon now. As that was kind of a shocker to see for the 78 machine. And due to the fact not a lot of action has been going on here for a month, we'll take a quick FR on replay here to see what happened to the 78 machine there. Make him spin around, and it was coming off the back stretch chicane. He just came in with too much speed, hit the rumble strips, hit the inside one, and just carried too much speed and looped it around. And hard contact for the nose on the outside wall for Barry Stevens, but losing all that ground in time. And now we see him back in 11th place as we move back to the action live. But man, uh, that was a very hard contact for the 78 of Barry Stevens. And, you know, with the side little scrapes that we're seeing from these drivers, yes, it's hurting arrow wise, but at least it's not hurting the damage. I mean, for the engine damage, um, well, that contact looked like it could have been hurting RPMs for the 78 machine, which is something you really do not want to get when you're at such a large track that you need that speed to go through. Yeah, it isn't. Yeah, you do not want to lose any RPM at a road course. That is basically your lifeline off these turns on the throttle. So you do not want to lose any of that. But the damage on the front end of that 78, he's either hurt the radiator, RPM, or anything like that. So we'll have to wait and see just how much it hurts him. But here comes your leader, the lap, the 78 of Barry Stevens. And quick recap on that lead, it's 6.4 seconds. So we'll have to see exactly how that holds up. But Logan Helton's been able to extend that gap through the run by about three seconds from when we last talked about him. Yeah, I mean, Logan Helton coming into this race, he was probably the favorite based off of practice to not get the fastest during qualifying. That went to Cole Hooper, who right now is running in third place. Uh, these are teammates, so this should be an easy pass for the eight over the 78 here as Barry Stevens gifting the eight machine that place. But uh, Logan Helton looked like he was going to be the fastest car based off of the best lap so far in the race only car to be running at 119.6 uh, everyone else has been running a 120 or slower than that so uh, very impressive by the eight machine just showing that he's got the fastest car out here and the only car right now running a 122.8 everyone else running a 123 or worse than that 
on the track. But as I say that, coming across the line, Cole Hooper just put a 121, I mean, 122.9. So he's just a little bit off of Logan Heldson and kind of hoping for a full course caution. I think uh, Cole Hooper could be the driver that could challenge Logan Heldson at the moment. Yeah, it'd be a, a full course caution would really restack it all, wouldn't it? And give these drivers at the front of the field the battle that uh, I guess they would also want as well. But we're getting closer and closer to the halfway point of this race. And also, that means the one pit stop we're expecting, the one stop here. And we're getting closer to that as well. Yeah, and right now, Joshua Gordon, as his battle for seventh place is now underway. Uh, Kevin Roy in the four machine trying to hold off the 93 of Joshua Gordon. Gordon has just been having a, um, a real comeback day. His first lap spun it around, uh, was running up and I believe sixth place, dropped all the way back to last place and slowly but methodically has now moved his way up to seventh place now, pushing Kevin Roy back, which Roger Gregory is loving to see because right now Kevin Roy at the moment, six points is the difference between himself and Roger Gregory. So if we could see Kevin Roy drop all the way back to possibly 12th place, that would gift Roger Gregory a position into uh, the top eight for next round. Yeah, and that's not that's not hard to think about when you think about just where twelfth place is on the track compared to Kevin Roy. He's still about half a lap down, so a couple spins in a row for Kevin Roy would really hamper his uh, playoff advance hopes. But right now he's keeping it. I mean, he might not be the quickest car on track, but you got to give him credit. He hasn't really spun it or hit a wall or anything, so he's been really consistent. Yeah, and I think that's the goal for most of these drivers is at the moment, uh, Tim Williams looks like he'll be uh, being heavily pressured as you see him locking up the brakes there in the corner number one as he's about to be the next victim of being put a lap down. So far, only nine drivers on the lead lap as uh, Jeffrey Meyer being the last car at one lap down. But Tim Williams being the next car, he is feeling the pressure because he's been overdriving a lot of these corners lately, and it just looks like he's just off his rhythm and really off his game. Uh, he needs to start just running consistent times. Yes, he's in the good so far for points-wise with seeing uh, the troubles by Carson Bowers. So uh, looking like the 19 machine will be moving on to the next round. Carson Bowers, though, in a very tricky position where he is at the bubble and if uh, Roger Gregory, Gregory does not move up, it looks like uh, it's going to be close between those two drivers. It could come down to one or two points on who's move, making it into the next round. Yeah, and then 19, he's really struggling right now. We've seen him earlier lock it up, have a couple spins as well. So those front rear tires are not really up to you know, snuff there on the 19. Is the eight car now of Logan Helton on his back bumper to put him a lap down, as you did well point out earlier. So we'll have to. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna miss it big time! Oh my goodness! Wow, he missed that by a mile. He really didn't even like put in a chance to try to slow down into that chicane, and that actually hurt suspension wise. He's got a lot of front end damage because of the way that he hit the rumble strips. That is a lot of damage that just went to the 19 machine of Tim Williams, who now coming out of the pits. Ooh. That is going to be. Tyner coming out in the 51 machine, almost making contact with Tim Williams. And also, it's going to be David Santini in the 99 that almost made contact with that lap car. And uh, Sam, I don't think we've mentioned this at all, but something happened to Logan Helton. We didn't see it at all. But the gap went down from nearly seven seconds to now 3.5 for the battle for the lead. So Logan Ooh. either got held up or something happened Speaking to the, of the lead. Coming into the pits, it's going to be Cole Hooper as well as Longacre coming into the pits. So some of our top five cars coming into the pits now. It is the halfway marker. It is your time to make that pit stop as, you know, relooking the Logan Helton incident. I think it might have been due to the fact that Tim Williams went off the track. He had to slow down. He wasn't sure where that uh, 19 car was going to go. And that's why he lost so much time in that incident. Yeah, absolutely. A good, good spot there. But... We should see them come in pit road either this time or next time by. You don't want to give up too much time to anybody on this racetrack, especially when we said it was a three-second fall-off. But a 119 to 120, that's not that bad of a fall-off compared to where everyone else is running there, Sam. Yeah, I mean, it's not too bad of a fall-off at the moment. As now in the pits, that's going to be Kevin Roy that pulls it in, as well as Jeffrey Meyer in the 38 machine. 
So uh, we've got a couple drivers that were in our top five that have pitted. Now drivers that are outside the top 10 have pitted. So our mixture of drivers that are deciding to sign a pit coming in now as Matt Knight as well as coming as coming into the pits. A driver that has already came in uh, but is already a lap down is Brandon Andrews in that 24 machine. We'll see how much he can gain as well as we saw the 51 of Tyner already pit. So a lot of cars switching it up and now Elaineville coming in in that 18. Yeah, Laneville comes in now. He's going to get passed by Cole Hooper. We expected that to happen. Cole was ahead of him via this pit sequence. And we're going to see just how much time he loses to... Uh, uh, who was the driver behind him? Gregory, I believe it was. I don't think yeah, Gregory Rod, pitted Roger yet. Gregory so. has not pitted yet. No. But he's going to pass him here, so we'll have to wait and see how this all battles out. But uh, give the advantage right now to Laneville as he will have their fresh tires over Gregory. Now, with the drivers that are pitting now at the halfway marker... Yes, they will be splitting this in half, but the drivers that are trying to extend it past that is, oh, in front of our leader, more drivers slightly uh, overshooting where they were at. And I'm trying to figure out who that was in front of. There was a puff of smoke that came up. I think that might have been uh, the 93 or, yeah, I believe that was the 93 possibly that came into the pits, but... Uh, these drivers that are staying out, they're going to have the potentials. Oh, a car spinning in the back, I believe. Yes, that's Brandon Andrews in the 24 machine. And now deciding to uh, teleport and tow to pit road. And we'll see if he decides to quit this race, as it has not been kind for this 24 machine. No, he's, had a, he's had a hard night, but we'll wait and see exactly what he chooses to do. But... Uh, the point you are trying to make, I'm, I'm thinking the point you're trying to make is these drivers trying to extend this out as far as possible. They're trying to save the freshness of those tires from yeah. later in the race compared to the drivers you're pitting now. I think this is what you're trying to get at there. I'm trying to, but there's so much action that just pops up. They don't want me to finish my statement. But yeah, that's exactly <laughs> where I was trying to go. Uh, do you think that's a better strategy to have the fresher tires by the end? Because you know these drivers are going to be losing about three seconds, if not more than that, by the end of this race just by pitting it halfway. Uh, it you know uh, it's tough to call because you think about tracks like this it's not that it's not that bad on tire wear believe me it's not mid Ohio bad but when you think about you know the three second gap if you can try to keep the lap times where they are as Cole Hooper just ran a similar lap time to your leader last time by 119.8 with those fresh tires so Logan Helen's been able to keep that gap and lap times down even with the old tires he of course he's going to stretch it out but for these drivers it's the best option right now is to try to pit now, get their fresh tires, and it doesn't matter if late in the race, you can have another set of caution comes out. Just come in, get the tires, and put down a lot of times right now while you can. I mean, just like you made that statement about Hooper putting down a screaming quick time, you have to look at the intervals. Look at your top three. If you see Hooper within 39 seconds of our leader, he will be gifted the lead here on this next time that we see Logan Helton pit. So he is aiming for that within 39 seconds, but... That is asking for a lot for these drivers that are pushing it really hard and already a full second, almost a full second drop off for Cole Hooper that uh, only with one lap was able to put down such a quick lap time. Yeah, but right now he's still running a 120 compared to a 122. So uh, he'll be, he'll get within he'll get within that time if Logan stays out any longer. So Logan's got to be watching an interval like we are, and he's got to be planning around that. So once he sees him get down near that 39, well, he's there now, 39 seconds. He's there. Seconds. He's yeah. already there. So you'd be boxing this time if you're Logan Helton. As we're starting to wait and see when driver's going to come in, staying out once again, Helton and Santini staying out for another lap. So that gap that Cole Hooper has... He just needs to continue to run these clean, consistent laps and hope that he's got a big enough gap that it's big enough before Santini or Helton come out of nowhere and try to catch up to the double zero. Now, I'll give credit where credit's due. If Helton and Santini are smart road racers, like, you know, I think I am sometimes. I'm not being brash, but I like to think <laughs> I'm, a good, I'm a good strategist. I'm not the best racer, but I'm a good strategist. They have about a six to nine second buffer with those fresh tires. So if even if Colt Hooper were to overgap them by six to nine seconds, they'd get right back on him. No questions asked with those fresher tires. So they can stay out until he gets to about 30 seconds on him. Once they get to about 30 seconds on him, that's that nine second gap. And you don't want him to get any farther than that because by the time you catch him, you guys are going to be about on equal tires again. 
Four drivers still haven't pitted yet. Logan Helton, David Centini, as well as Roger Gregory and Barry Stevens still have not pitted. All three BJ McLeod machines of Barry Stevens, Logan Helton, Centini still have not pitted, which shows to me this is a team strategy. Stay out as long as possible. Keep the freshest tires so that you can gain on everyone else once you come to the pits. Yep, and Centini's been able to keep it nice and true and honest since he... Uh, Helton had that little mishap that brought him down to about three seconds. The gap's now point, uh, 4.5 uh, between Helton and Centini, the BJ McLeod teammates. And we're going to have to see exactly how this goes under pit strategy. Does Again, does Centini risk the game of pitting a little earlier than Helton? We're getting to the point now to where you're going to be having fresh tires again no matter what. So now here comes the mind games that we were talking about earlier. Do you set your driver up ahead of you? Or do you play the waiting game and see him come in, or do you come in? Yeah, I mean, those mind games are going to be so difficult because all season long, I think Seth and I have talked about it of, you know, when are you going to be playing the strategy game of helping yourself over sticking with the team strategy? Because Logan Helton and David Santini, they seem to always pit at the same time, and we always, I mean, Seth and I in the booth, we're always talking about, what if you pit it a little bit earlier? What if you stretch out a little bit longer to try to get some type of advantage on your teammates so you can beat them out? Uh, but we know both drivers are set and clean to make it to the next round. So right now it's more of let's have a good finish for the team than it looks like it is as a strategy call to uh, best your teammate at the moment. Uh, God, uh, uh, it, it hurts me because I'm a team guy as well. But at the end of the day, it's also my race. And, you know, I want to win a race. So, of course, you're going to watch out for your team. You don't want to wreck each other. You don't want to do anything like that. But you both are in the next round. Give it a shot pit a little early try to gain it try to battle you know have a good time this team stuff is great and all but sometimes sometimes you got to go out you got to think outside the bun <laughs> you, gotta, you, you, you gotta really go do in there sometimes. yeah sometimes you do and I'm, I'm hoping that they do that but right now it seems to be a pretty set in stone team strategy to pit about the same time well i'll let you know looking at the telemetry that last lap Centini was running seven tenths faster than Logan Helton, our leader. So that 99 machine has been finding something on track. It's either consistency or been able to save enough tires on this late run to finally start catching up to our leader. Also, Cole Hooper is now almost a full second off when he was running about two seconds better than our leaders uh, about for the past three laps. So you're starting to see the tires equal out now, and the gap isn't big enough, I think, at this moment for Cole Hooper to have a big enough lead to win this race. It might be between the BJ McLeod teammates. Yeah, but we've seen how much how difficult passing can be at this racetrack. I mean, right now, I'm not saying it's holding him up, but I think Brandon Andrews is you know, slowly getting to the brain of Logan Helton as he almost missed the chicane there, right? It's those turtle curbs very hard through the final chicane, but this is what's giving Dave Sassani this gap drop down is I think Brandon Andrews ahead of him, and, you know, that's going to get to the driver eventually, and if that's Cole Hooper, think about after the pit stop, then that really gets in the brain, and that's the leader there, and I can't get by him. Yeah, but right now, the battle for first and second is at three seconds. At one point, it was up to six, I think it was up to six seconds. It dropped down to three and a half due to the incident with Tim Williams. It then climbed back up to four and a half seconds. As it continues to look a little shaky as Brandon Andrews. Woo! <laughs> yeah, he went right around, right in front of Logan Helton, and I was, I closed my eyes. I didn't want to see the end result of that, but... Both drivers get by clean, and it's still 2.7 seconds now. But at one point, Sam, it was up to 7.012. So that gap is really closed down here before the pit stops. A driver that pitted late and was kind of doing a similar strategy. What our leaders are doing, that's going to be Roger Gregory. He has pitted, now going to be trying to run down Tom Laneville. But uh, that gap is almost 40 seconds, and I don't think he'll be running that gap down anytime soon. No, he needs a full course yellow. That's a that's half a race. Readers track in. Now. Logan Helton coming into the pits, and it looks like Santini following suit as they are now at a gap of 2.7 seconds into the pits. But you can gain time on pit road. You have to come in clean. Don't slide your tires and hope that your pit your pit crew is quick on these re, on these pit stops. All right, here we go. Here comes the moment we've all been waiting for in this race. Where's Cole Hooper? Through NASCAR in three and four. Here he comes now. And the driver's on pit lane, getting her tires right sides going on. 
Now left side, it's Cole Hooper now entering the final chicane. So Cole Hooper will get the lead here, the net lead, off this pit uh, cycle here at Charlotte. But again, he does not have the big enough gap. Ooh. Oh, it might be close, though. It's going to be close. That was a good pit stop by those two BJ McLeod cars. Yeah, they were. Oh, Hooper's there. Get Hooper's there, but the only issue, he's on much older tires. Mm -hmm. He's on eight lap older tires, and it's already dropped off by three seconds, uh, almost two and a half seconds, excuse me, for Cole Hooper. So he's going to be running so much slower than what these BG McLeod teammates are going to be doing. But look at the telemetry. It is within 2.6 seconds, and lap cars are getting out of the way for our leaders to battle it out. Yeah, he needed to clear those two BJ cars to even have a shot. Now they're just now. If you, I mean, he's going to be sitting there in that mirror and just seeing them go bye bye with those fresh tires. So I'm I just cold, thought he was close enough, just not. As now the only driver that needs to pit to finish out this race will be uh, Barry Stevens in the 78 machine, running 10th place and un, uh, being one lap down. The next car to go one lap down is going to be uh, Joshua Gordon in that 93 machine, who is trying his best to stay out there. But uh, Logan Helton right on his back bumper. Yeah, now we need to figure out if <laughs> if a full course yellow comes out, that's gonna put a that's gonna put a wrench in everybody's side. But that might be just what Cole Hooper's waiting for is a full course yellow. I don't think we're gonna get one. Everyone's pretty much no. spread out just far enough now. That's not I gonna mean, be an issue. You're needing a full course yellow and another set of tires, which you don't have. That's the thing. All drivers, once you come to the pits, use all four tires. That's it. You're, you've used all your sets of tires for these drivers to work with during this race. So. Uh, the strategy of staying out has worked out so far for the BJ McLeod crew as they're starting to pull away from everyone else. Once again, as Centini at one point and at the moment right now is gained up to two and a half seconds, did have a faster pit stop that helped uh, gain about three tenths on our leader and actually has been slightly running a little bit faster here. So uh, not surprised to see that Centini is slowly but surely gaining on the eight machine, but they're running so similar with 17 laps to go, coming to 16 when they cross the line. This is going to be a close run between these two drivers. And I uh, do know I want to put out my uh, notes here that uh, Aaron Tyner has put it behind the wall, so the 51 car out of tonight's running, uh, which again moves Brandon Andrews up yet another position. He'll be P13 by the end of this race if he keeps it on track for that 24 car. Yeah, it's looking for a P13, but he needed a win here today to move on to the next round. And with the issues that he's been having, does not look like it is possible. Brandon Andrews looking like he is done for uh, this race, possibly. He's still running out there, chugging along, doing the best that he can. Looking at drivers that are coming in the pits. Barry Stevens finally pulling that 78 machine in, but might have already lost way too much ground to try to catch up to anybody. Yeah, and he had that damage also, Sam. So th this is basically just the let's get her home type pit stop. I don't think he's going to fix the damage that much. He might. He's already back enough. He might just fix it. So we'll see what the 78 does here. But uh, Battle for Lead is now up to about three seconds, Sam. Yeah, as they continue to try to move forward with this thing, uh, it's looking to be a, a solid day for these drivers. And... Um, Barry Stevens back out there did not get too much of that damage repaired. Got a got about a second and second and a half repaired and got back out there as we try to get ourselves back out on course. Yeah, I'm just looking through the looking through the field, looking for any uh, close battles. The closest cars on racetrack right now are uh, Evan Longacre and Tommy Laneville. Uh, we saw them battling earlier in this race, and you know, we might see them battling again late in this race as they come down the back straightaway towards the chicane. So fourth and fifth might heat up at the end. We'll have to wait and see. But right now, Tom Laneville has been able to cut that gap in just little by little over a lawn acre. So we'll have to wait and see if that 10 and 18 game become the battle we need to look forward to at the end of this race. Yeah, I mean, I was starting to see a, a battle about to come up in eighth place between Kevin Roy and uh, Tom Williams. I mean, Tim Williams, excuse me. And Williams, we've seen have his woes today. And, uh, Decided to try to jump off the, the rumble strips, but uh, is still running right now. Ninth place, but one lap down for himself. Uh, other drivers that uh, pointed their way in 
uh, just by starting the race. Jeffrey Meyer, uh, right now running in 10th place, just by starting this race, due to the fact that we did not have enough drivers, has pointed his way into the next round. So uh, congratulations to Jeffrey Meyer uh, for pointing his way in. Everyone else still kind of in a limbo state of a lot of things could change here late in this run to see who's going to make it in as Roger Gregory trying to do his best, but uh, redoing the math, I think Roger Gregory might be out by a one point uh, going into the next round. So I think Carson Bowers might have done just enough. Yeah, well, Carson Bowers also, you know, yeah. Kevin, this Kevin Roy battle is going to, I don't think it's going to be meaning that much in the grand scheme of points, but I mean, any little oh, any position. Long Acre completely skips out on that chicane now gifting that position to laneville pushing longacre back a position yeah longacre uh, he was struggling and we knew landville was catching him to begin with so we'll have to wait and see but he's really locked those heated those front tires up blocking it up and he's just going to struggle now for the rest of this run luckily about 12 laps to go when to come back around but 12 laps here the roll was still a long time yeah, looking at the telemetry for these drivers, uh, dropping back for the battle for eighth place as Kevin Roy is under fire now by the 19 machine, which uh, very helpful for Roger Gregory because he's hoping to see more drivers pass by Kevin Roy. The issue, though, is that Jeffrey Meyer is 71 seconds back from the 19 machine as this pass goes by. So uh, I don't see Jeffrey Meyer catching up to the four machine and making that pass. So Kevin Roy might be another driver that could point his way in. Now, the only driver that could point his way in and didn't need a win to get in was Roger Gregory. So there's only one position that these drivers are kind of in a, uh, a scary moment. And it looks like uh, right now Carson Bowers would be that driver that is in the uh, really the scary zone, if anything, of the bubble spot of not knowing if he's completely in until the end of this race. Yeah, and that's always something in the back of your brain. It doesn't matter how hard you're driving, if you try to put it out of your brain. That's something you always have in the back of your brain. And luckily tonight for these drivers, even though it was a rocky start, most of them have kept the pressure two minutes. Yeah, and um, re-looking at our leaders, that, that gap has grown. As right now, Centini has continued to just start pulling away what was looking like a two and a half second gap, now up to 3.1 seconds. And, uh, you know, it's, sh it's shaking back and forth, but it's staying around three seconds now. And Elton feeling pretty comfortable at the moment. Not really looking like anyone's going to be making any passes on him soon. As uh, looking now, Roger Gregory going to be running high, letting our leader go on by very easily here. Uh, just going a lap down. Now we only have a total of five drivers. One lap, uh, five drivers still left on the lead lap, excuse me as it looks like more issues for the 18 as he'll be losing his spot to uh, Longacre. Longacre making slight contact. He'll be losing some speed and that battle for fourth place on again. And that's the battle, that's the battle I said was going to rage to the end of the race and man, mark me down for true. This It's been back and forth between the mistakes here for Longacre and uh, Landville. So I'll keep my eye on this one. Oh, wow. He really popped that turtle. <laughs> Oh no, they they completely are just being super aggressive on that backstretch chicane and just uh you know, we've seen Longacre overshoot it and we've also seen Laneville uh, make some co hard contact on the rumble strip. So these drivers are putting on the best show that they can and just trying to survive this racetrack that has been brutal for a lot of these machines. Yeah, being a diehard prototype driver, that that's a spine breaker every time I see a car pop that turtle. Oh man, but these stock cars, they're, they're doing a good job than I holding up with uh, all the uh, fenders and, well, springs on them. Yeah, I mean, these drivers are putting on, uh, they're trying, they're trying their best. But um, as this round is coming to an end, as this race also comes to an end, this is, we're dropping from 12 drivers down to eight in the playoffs. And starting off next round, uh, we're going to Kansas for 100 and uh, 150 laps for those drivers and it's going to be a wild one for them as kansas has been all about strategy and we know that the bj mcleod guys have been very strong at strategy calls uh, but drivers to watch out for i think Longacre, he's been consistent at oval races and i think he's another driver that could possibly put on a, a chance to move on to the final four 
And then after Kansas, we go to Texas and then Iowa, which is completely different from how this first round was for these drivers. I mean, this first round was wild. We went from Bristol to Las Vegas, now to the Roval. So you had a mixture of everything really for this round of 12, but the round of eight staying pretty consistent with just going to ovals. Yeah, but each oval there is, wow, wow, look, look, so long on it. Sure. <laughs> it's all over the grass. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm pretty sure staying on the track is the best option, and I'm pretty sure the grass is just going to make you slide. So, uh, oh, Long Acre, yeah. let's stay on the track. If you want to be our, our mower for here at uh, Charlotte, you can always apply to uh, be here and, and help with gardening. Uh -huh. But, man, here, here comes Langville on the inside. He's there. He'll get to the quarter panel and just ease off there. Good run off the corner there for Long Acre, but... Remember, this is the artificial turf here on the front stretch because he's diving in the inside. Locks up for Long Acre. Whoa. He's off. There goes Long Acre, and Laneville actually made a slight mistake on his own, but the bigger mistake goes to the 10 machine who's still trying to mow grasses out there and slight contact with the outside wall. And now Evan Long Acre losing a lot of time here, which you would hope that with the battling we're seeing between these two cars, it will allow Roger Gregory to catch up, but... This 12 machine has been having his own issues as he's continuously being passed by machines and it's not looking good for the 12 of Roger Gregory, who uh, now is uh, one lap down, first car one lap down, and w was gaining time. He was almost about 30 seconds away from the battle for fourth place, now back to almost 40 seconds and it's not looking good for the 12 to make up another position here. No, he's getting, he's getting out of the nitty-gritty. We need a full-course yellow or something to majorly happen for him to have a shot. But, ah, uh, good move. I, you know, that was a good move by Landville. He baited Lawnacre in there, and he just he locked up, and he just went wide. So good move there from the 18 to uh, bait the 10. I don't know if it's lap cars or a mistake, but Logan Helton has lost a ton of time, and now David Santini is there. He's about 1.7 seconds back from the 8 machine, but he is right there at the cusp of being at the back bumper of the 8. These two are about to battle it to the end as we're coming to 9 laps to go as they cross the line. Yeah, blood's in the water now, boys. Blood's in the water, and I can tell you, Santini, he smells that blood. So, uh, we, we didn't really catch what happened to Helton, but for the gap to go down from 3 to 1.7 seconds, Sam, something, either a lap car or a miss chicane or something happened to that 8 car to really lose that time. As they continue to battle and get closer and closer, we're going to take a quick FRN replay to see if we can figure out what exactly happened to Logan Helton to make him lose all this time because obviously something happened, possibly with a lap car um, that came up in the last couple of laps as we were watching other battles go on. And as I'm going back, I'm not seeing any type of major issue that possibly could have hurt this machine as uh, I think back here, possibly when he was making a pass on his teammate, uh, Barry Stevens, in the front stretch through the chicane. I think this is where he possibly lost a lot of time trying to get, yeah, he slowed up, woke up, and really hurt the eight machine entering to corner number one. And that was about three laps ago. And that's where all the lost time was. And as we come back to the live screen and, and see what's going on, more issues for the eight as Jeffrey Meyer now there and making him lose more time. And now it's less than a second. Yeah, but this is going to hurt Centini in this chicane. Meyer, he's right ahead of him. And there's going to be no time gained or lost for, uh, he's going to get held up here. Yeah, that's exactly what happened in Meade. Logan Helton lose time was that move right there being caught up with a lap machine through the last chicane and what was less than a second is now up to more than a second and a half now as David Centini he gained all that time from simple mistakes uh, and catching up the lap cards the wrong time is now has hurt the, 80, the 99 machine. Yeah, but now he sees him now he's right in front of him. So, you know, if you're Centini, this is this is renewed life in that race. For you, I mean, you see the driver ahead of you. It looks like he's even struggling with tire wear that you might not be. So, you know, like I said, blood's in the water. We'll see if Santini can jump on it. Santini's going to continue to try to push forward as these drivers are getting more and more set up. As, uh, you know, it, this Roval, we've already seen it be very tough on everyone through the field. As it just seems like our front two are the only ones that really haven't had major issues of being knocked off course or making contact with someone. It's more of been, oh, we caught a lap machine at a poor time, and now we're trying to move forward from here. Yeah, and you know that's 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 road course racing, especially multi-class racing. So, 
Uh, if, the, if both of these drivers are any kind of road course aces, which the way that I've been seeing them drive tonight, they they very much are. They understand that and they know how to pass these lap down cars. But these chicanes here, there's only one way through, and sometimes there's a lap car right ahead of you, and that slows you down. And uh, just you know, taking a gander at the uh, the telemetry and where drivers are running now, I mean. The big difference, I mean, there was about eight laps difference between our top two and third place, Cole Hooper. And when they came out, Cole Hooper was less than a half a second on David Santini's back bumper, almost made the pass for second place when they came out of the pits. And since then, it has grown. That lead between second and third place is now up to 29 and a half seconds. And between the leader and Hooper, it is now 31.8 seconds. So that's just the power of fresh tires and 10 laps. I mean, that is incredible to see. Yeah, I'm just watching Longacre. He's, uh, I, I don't want to say he's slow, but he went high through three. He is struggling hard right now, but it, it's too little too late, I don't think, because Gregory's coming off the backstretch now. So Yeah, Gregory is about 30 seconds back from Longacre. So even if Longacre continues with the mistakes he's making now, he's only losing about a second a lap. If not, maybe it's a second and a half. And with that big of a lead, with seven laps to go, uh, you still got about 15 seconds as a buffer to work with. So Longacre still feeling comfortable, even with the mistakes that he has. As uh, other drivers are close within a second of battling one another, that's going to be Joshua Gordon here and Tim Williams. This is a battle for seventh place as we continue to watch them growing on and on. Uh, also got to keep your eye out for Kevin Roy and Jeffrey Meyer. They are within... Uh, actually, I take that back. I was looking at the wrong numbers. Uh, Kevin Roy feeling very comfortable as that is actually a massive number instead of what I was looking at. <laughs> it's 30, 36 seconds. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it was it's actually grown to now 46 seconds. It's massive. Uh, as we go back to this battle here for seventh place, Joshua Gordon under fire by Tim Williams now coming into corner number one. Who can get the better launch out of the corner? And it's looking like Gordon really has it at the moment. But they're also have caught up to slight lap traffic here as they're now up to the 24 of Brandon Andrews. Tim Williams really, really on the brakes hard. I mean, he's using up those brakes that's left in that 19 Jacobs Racing Toyota. So we'll see if he can get there. He's like being aggressive right now, but that 93, I believe, has a little bit better rear tire than the 19 as the 19 goes a little wide there. But this lap down car could change things unless he gets out of the way. Whoa, Tim Williams smacking that wall. I think he actually hit it at the perfect spot, though. That might have helped him. Uh, here on iRacing, it, due to it being a virtual setting, there are certain walls. If you hit it just right, it actually will help you and won't slow you down. It will. Uh, Bristol. Yeah, Bristol is one of the keys. There's some dirt tracks. Uh, if you hit the wall just right, it will launch you off the corner with more speed. Tim Williams deciding he cannot slow down quick enough, as Andrews as well is deciding to do donuts. Uh, and getting out of the way as we're now five laps to go and that difference is now grown over to three and a half seconds We're gonna move back up to our leaders It is less than a second and a half between the eight of Logan Hilton and David Santini as these teammates battle it on To see who's gonna win here at Charlotte Roval as they continue to fight on They're still good to make it to the next round both of them already secured their chances into the, the round of eight before this race even started. So this is more of just a race for pride and to see who's going to carry that momentum going to the round of eight. Yeah, Santini better not sneeze. Um, I'm sorry, Helton better not sneeze because Santini is there. I mean, when it comes to road course, I know on the oval, 1.3 seconds, you might, you could go this late in the race. Ah, the race is over. He's just he's going to win it. Here at the road course, here at the roval, 1.3 seconds is basically on your bumper. So if he sneezes, misses the chicane, takes the chicane wrong, Centini will be there, so this is really going to heat up now as we come down to under four laps to go. Under four laps to go, and we are itching closer and closer to the end of this thing. This is our closest battle on track. It's between our leaders, the eight of Logan Helton and David Centini. As we continue to watch them battle it on, they're going to get closer and closer here. Oh, my goodness. Uh, we are going to take a quick side-by-side Replay. I know we're coming to the end of this thing, but once we come to three laps to go, we're going to get back to the action.
Since the VFW was founded, their mission was really to look out for the veterans community, to make sure that our nation upholds its promise to really care for the service member, the veteran, and his or her family. There are several ways that the VFW fights for veterans today. The top services include disability claims assistance, advocacy on Capitol Hill and with the Department of Veterans Affairs. We also offer scholarship opportunities and then also volunteerism. For me personally, when I came back from Iraq, my life experience was drastically different from and we're back. Three laps to go. It's been a wild one here. 48 laps have been collected, and we've got only three to go here. My name is Sam Dyer. With me is Warren Keith. And Warren, it has been a wild one, and our leaders were looking like it was going to be a close battle to the end, but slight issues there for David Santini. Yeah, Santini got real loose off that final chicane, got the rears lit up. And, you know, that's cost him about a tenth or two, but he's been able to put his head down and get back within 1.5 seconds there through the infield as Helton gets loose onto the oval. We'll see if Santini can close down that gap even further. And as they're getting closer and closer, there shouldn't be too many lap cars to deal with coming to the end of this thing. I think the next one to worry about would be Evan Longacre as we've got five cars left on the lead lap. But man, it is, uh, it's a close one. It's almost, it's a little bit over a second and a half between our front two. This is the closest battle here on track. As man, this is just a, 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 our final race here of the round of 12 to see who will move on to the round of eight moving forward. And so far, our top two have been the same machines all race long. Logan Helton, David Santini, it's a second and a half across the line. And moving forward, can Centini make it? Because there's plenty of time here in these two laps to make the pass, but you gotta hit your marks and catch up to this eight machine. Yeah, I was gonna say the turn one like that, if he does that turn one yet again, it's not he's not gonna get there at all, because that turn one, he missed the apex by about a good ten feet and went a little wide as he's getting loose. Now he's pushing that car as hard as he can, but we do have the lap cars of Longacre ahead of him. We'll see if he gets out of the way or not, but we'll He's just right in front of that battle for the lead, and we'll see exactly if he does move out of the way or not. Longacre in cruise control at the moment. As uh, coming into this race, it was all about who was going to be the final eight. Roger Gregory was one of the drivers that could point his way in, right now running sixth place. The driver he was aiming for was first was going to be Evan Longacre, but Longacre's been running consistent and well. Then he was looking about Kevin Roy possibly out pointing him, but Kevin Roy's been staying in the bubble enough to where he can still stay in the top eight. Then it, we thought it was going to be Carson Bowers, but Bowers finishing now in eight and 15th place. I think that's just enough by about a second or two. I mean, about a point or two to keep himself above Roger Gregory. So I don't know if Roger Gregory is going to make it uh, to the top eight, but white flag in the air. It's between Logan Helton and David Santini. 1.2 seconds. It's been gained by three tenths. Can Santini gain a second at point 1.2 seconds here in this final lap? Well, we're off to the races now, boys. They head down towards the turn three and four complex. Lawn Anchor still the car over the shadow of these two. Does he get out of the way or does he let them race by? Down the back straightaway, the infield back straightaway here at Charlotte Roval. Into the sharp right-hander and into the long sweeping right-hander as they about ready to go down the dipper. It's still 1.2 seconds as Lawn Anchor does get out of the way as they go through the dipper. Longacre just gets out of the way as quick as possible, trying to make sure that he does not influence this battle for the lead in any fashion and does a great job. As David Santini, he's been running about two tenths faster, sometimes three tenths faster the last three laps, but I don't think it's enough. He needed over a second quicker than his teammate of Logan Helton as they're on the back stretch on this back stretch chicane. As they're coming to the end of this thing, I don't think that they're close enough. No, it was a little too, little too late for David Santini. He's going to have to either send it into this final chicane or it's all over. Through three and four, here they come to get the checkered flag, and I don't think Santini's going to get there. Logan Helton in the eight's been dominating ever since he got the lead on lap number one and continues on forward. The eight machine gets his another win this season, making it number six here today. Yeah, good finish from David Santini and Cole Hooper. As you know, he's coming down the back straightaway into the final chicane. Good rebound for the double zero after a drizzle start. Oh, I say that. Whoa. I almost it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be quiet. Yeah, I'm going to be quiet now. 
I mean, I, I think if Cole rewatches this broadcast, he's going to wonder every single time, what happened? Why did I get loose in this spot? And maybe question you there, uh, Warren. He's going to me. He's going to come to me first. <laughs> That caster's curse, it's real. It's Cole Hooper crosses the line. He'll be getting third place, dropping back to Laneville as he'll be trying to cross the line here. All these drivers still trying to finish this race. They were that spread out here at the Roval that it took them this long to try to finish it as now Laneville has to cross the line and uh, try to make it as Roger Gregory uh, looks like he'll be finishing this race off about 4.3 seconds back from a potential chance of finishing in the top 10 a rough day for a lot of these drivers, but our front two really kept it clean and had amazing days for Logan Helton and for David Santini finishing one, two again. Yeah. And the final gap between first and second is 0.6 of a second. So six tenths of a second between your two drivers at the front of the field and at the Roval, Sam, that's, pretty close that's basically a photo finish at an oval yeah i mean that last lap david santini was able to close that gap down to half of what it was it was 1.2 seconds when they crossed the line and cutting in half to 0 0.6 i mean a great run for santini there but here at the line logan elton gets to burn it down in that eight machine I mean, Warren, it's been a wild ride for sure as we're seeing Logan Helton burn it down. We'll take a quick look here at the final results of this race. It was Logan Helton, David Santini, Cole Hooper, and then Tom Laneville. Evan Longacre able to get and finish in the top five. Roger Gregory, six. Joshua Gordon, Tim Williams, Kevin Roy, and then Jeffrey Meyer, your top 10. As we move to the rest of the drivers that try to finish this race out, you got uh, Barry Stevens, Matt Knight, Brandon Andrews were the final 13 cars to finish out this race coming across the line. Uh, and then you had Aaron Tyner, Carson Bowers, and TJ Crampton uh, finishing out this race. They were not able to finish it themselves but able to watch it uh, from where they were at. But Warren, what were some of your final thoughts during this race? Well, you know, f final thoughts here from, you know, for this part of the race is definitely good racing all around. You know, we had a rocky start, but that's road course racing. You, you, you get used to it. Everyone has a rocky start every once in a while, but what they did was fantastic. They got back in the groove of it and they salvaged whatever they could. And I got to tell you, the drivers at the front of the race fantastic job for Logan Helton and Dave Santini. Some of the best uh, road course um, stock car racing I've seen in a long time. And one heck of a show here tonight for the uh, Rapid, uh, Rapid Fire Pizza Grand National Series. Yeah, I mean, a, a great showing for them. I think our comeback driver of the day has to go to Cole Hooper, who really, we thought, was just threw the race away in the first three laps. I mean, smash that uh, outside wall going into turn number one every single lap and thought maybe the race was over for himself able to rebound come back and finish with a solid top three finish for himself i mean that is a great showing for that double zero yeah especially like i said after the start he had well as these drivers have gotten done with some burnouts we're going to bring in our third place finisher cole hooper into the booth here and uh have a quick chat with a double zero Cole, it's Sam and Warren up in the booth. You got us? Yes, I do. Well, you had probably one of the rockier starts at the start of this race, but you came up with a top three. How was that race for you, though? I actually I actually enjoyed that race. I didn't make a few mistakes, but I came back from it. Yeah, I mean, speaking of those mistakes at the start, what happened there in the first three laps? It just seemed like that corner number one just was not your friend. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just I just kept making the same mistake over and over. Yeah, you know, that was a heck of a rebound. And I, I got to mention here, you know, we thought you were going to get close there on that cycle of pit stops. You know, the only cycle of pit stops we had tonight due to the one-stop nature of this race. When, when they were coming off pit lane, what was your thought process when you saw those two drivers ahead of you? Was it like, I can get them or uh, that's it, we're done here? I, I thought I could get them still, but they started pulling away, and it just they just kept getting farther away. Yeah, I mean, Cole, overall, I think that was an amazing showing on your part to uh, have that fortitude to continue pushing forward, even with those early mistakes. And uh, before we let you go, the floor is yours for any shout-outs. 
Well, I'd like to thank Rapid Fired Pizza, iRacing iFlag, FSM Customs, Shorba's Racing Graphics, and and Jones's Racing Setups for, and then everyone else that was watching out there. That's Cole Hooper in the double zero, finishing third here today. A great running for yourself, sir. Yep. Now, Warren, it was a wild race for a lot of those drivers, but for two of them, they had great f runs uh, up front. Almost got to see a side-by-side -side action. We're now going to be bringing in David Santini. Uh, David, it's Sam and Warren. You got us? Hey, got you guys. What's going on? I mean, that race for you, I mean, you were sitting in th uh, up, up front during that start, and then you got to see a whole bunch of cars going into turn one having issues. How was the starts for you here? <laughs> well, I knew the, obviously, I knew there wasn't going to be cautions because it's just the way the race was, but I was was worried about the initial start. I was talking uh, to Barry. I'm like, I don't know if I want to qualify. I don't know what I want to do. And then I sat there for a little while, and then I ended up qualifying. And I'm like, man, I'm just really worried about this start. <laughs> and when I seen, uh, I believe it was Cole, go wide up into the wall there, I I don't know how I didn't get an X. I could have swore I touched him, but somehow I didn't get damage. And uh, once I got through there, it was just like a, a huge relief. <laughs> but it was a little nerve-wracking there at first. For sure. Yeah, I mean, completely. I mean, it was nerve wracking from us to watch because it just seemed <laughs> like almost every lap somebody was clobbering that wall at some point. Uh, but there during the middle, you were slowly catching up to Logan. And even at the end of this race, was there anything else you possibly could have done to catch up to that eight machine? Yeah, if I would have had about another lap or two. <laughs> but no, I mean, I know I typically know how Logan runs now and I knew what I had to do to um i just had to save tires and i mean that's what this race was you could have a good setup but if you didn't save your tires i mean you were just going to fall back and towards the middle of the run i i wasn't really pushing because the more you push the worse it just got um but i seen he was slowly falling off i didn't know if he was just dogging it to let me catch up or what he was doing but either way i was catching up and then uh when we i didn't want to pit first so i was waiting for him to see what he would do uh he ran the entire run out there so we pitted. I caught up. I believe I was within two seconds at that point. Um, he had better short run speed. I don't know if that's because he was just pushing initially or, or faster setup or what. But I knew, again, as, as hard as it is to lay off and not push and try to stay close, I'm like, just run the race, just do it. And then, uh, yeah, right there at the end, I mean, we got up to just over half a second. And uh, it's a little frustrating. But, I mean, all in all, I had a pretty clean race. I only hit the wall once, so I can't really complain about that. And uh, a win for the team's good, too. So, And a second-place finish. I mean, can't complain about that either. So, <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, you know, middle of the race up here in the broadcast booth, we're sitting here and we're going, David's got to be pitting earlier than Logan. He's got to. He's got to pit him early because he's gonna, that's the only chance he's going to have to pass him. Were you thinking about pitting earlier, or was it just a cut and dry BJ McLeod? You know, we're pitting this lap. That's what we're pitting, and that's the end of it. So I typically like to run some different kind of strategy, but it seemed like every time this year where I pitted early, it ended up biting me. Um, and knowing there was going to be no cautions, I wanted to either pit with him or after him. Um, optimally, I would have liked to run another lap or two, even though it was slower, because I think with that time you know, that you would gain over the run would have been more beneficial. But I mean, it still worked out good. Uh, like I said, I didn't want to pit before him, whatever happened. So it just worked out that we got about 30 laps out of it so yeah yeah i mean that was a wild run from our part because we were just watching you slowly chip away and we're like oh, he might be able to get there just not able to well we know that you were going to make it into the round of eight before this race even started there david but going into these next three races trying to make it into the final four uh, is there any race that you've got kind of circled that you feel most comfortable trying to go for a win at um, to be honest with you, uh, let's see what we got here. What do we have? Um, Kansas, Kansas Texas, Texas, Iowa. Um, Texas, probably Iowa. I think we did pretty good at Iowa earlier in this year. I, I actually think, I believe I won there. So, I mean, obviously that one I'd like to get a win at Kansas right away and be locked in. Um, but, I mean, we'll see. We had a we had a good race at Iowa and I believe Texas this year. So, I think Kansas was our only one we got wrecked in um, right at the beginning of the race. Um, I could be wrong, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like I said earlier, the earlier in the the round there you can get the win, the better. But <laughs> you never know what's going to happen in these races. Yeah, playoff time is wild and unknown. But David, before we let you go, the floor is yours for any shout outs. 
Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys putting on these broadcasts each and every week. And then, of course, Rapid Fire Pizza, iRacing iFlag, FSM Custom, uh, Shorbus Racing Graphics, and Abiding Love Memorial Earns. Well, that's Davidson Tini in the 99 machine getting a second place finish here and moving on to the round of eight. Good luck next week, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to talk to you there. Yep, thanks, guys. And Warren, I mean, we talked about the consistency. It was always there. But the man who won it all is going to be Logan Helton. And Logan put on an amazing show and just stayed up front almost the whole entire time. Logan, it's Sam and Warren. You got us? Yes, I do. Well, it seemed like from the start, you took the lead, you pulled away, and you were the favorite to win this thing. Was there any moment that you felt nervous that someone might be able to catch you? Well, I knew that David had a competitive setup all night long. Uh, whenever I was pulling away, I was pretty confident that he was actually saving. Um, so I didn't think that – I thought – hold on. I'm trying to word this. Right. In the long run, I was pretty sure he might put on the afterburners and catch me, and he, he sure did. So I was a little bit nervous whenever that happened, but I was just focused on making nice and calm and clean laps to try and make it to the – yeah. yeah, I mean, that was that was a great run on your part. Um, Logan, though, at the middle of the run, when you had the pit stop, was there a moment that you were thinking, maybe I should pit early, or were you thinking, I cannot pit in front of the, 88, of the 99 machine? Um, I'm Well, after racing this whole series uh, so far this season, it's every time you pit early, it kind of hurts you long run. So I, I wanted to either pit same lap as David or a lap after but uh I, I we couldn't do that because we ran out of fuel on that last lap so that's what forced us to come in but uh i definitely think if i paid in one lap before david he would have won this race seeing how it was that small of a gap at the end there yeah i was gonna say this my mic just cut out there yeah i was gonna say you know um that gap was cutting down and you know some of the, uh, i'm gonna give a little bit of uh, to the lap drivers there they weren't cutting you much slack some of them you know, you got caught up behind a couple, and that's what brought down the gap earlier in the race. Um, but what, in your eyes, what, what could, what, you know, what was your, what was your feeling of the car? We know we saw you in practice. You were very confident in practice. You were putting laps down that were quite nice, to be honest with you. So, what was your confidence in the setup? Was it good, neutral? What was it for you? Uh, well, I was super confident in it. I've been running a couple official races this week, and also thanks to McConey uh, Setup Shop for getting me this awesome sponsorship and set up. I got to give it all to them for that. But uh, I was super confident in the car. I, I knew what I needed to do, and I knew that if I just put it together clean laps, I had a really good chance of winning this race. But uh, David at the end there did give me a little bit of a scare, seeing him catch up a little bit closer and closer. Yeah, I mean, Logan, now that we know who's going to be moving on to the top eight, um, we knew that you were going to be going in because of your win last week at Las Vegas, now getting a win here at the Roval. The momentum moving on to the round of eight has to be high for you. Now we're going to Kansas, Texas, and Iowa for this round of eight to see who will be in the final four. Are any of those races feeling like you have a chance to win there or more of, I just got to stay consistent? Uh, I'm excited for uh, Kansas um, because last time we were there, I was competitive with Boyd Hogan whenever he subbed. It's just a lot of pit strategy and bad luck caught me off guard and my computer having a bit of problems. But uh, but uh, yeah, I'm excited for that. Texas, I, earlier this year, I had a really competitive setup for it, but I blew my engine because of a miss shift on lap 16. So that put me out. And then Iowa, I, I'm, I'm also confident with that because I – once again, had a competitive setup with David there earlier this year, but mistakes on my part keeping me from getting the wins there. Well, Logan, it's been a pleasure watching you guys race week after week and another win notched onto your belt. Before we let you go, though, the floor is yours for any shout outs. Yeah, first, thanks to McConey's uh, setup shop for uh, this awesome setup. Thanks to you guys for putting on the broadcast. Uh, everyone here at the league that puts us on, lets us race there week um one second i, I gotta get to the uh, uh okay here we go uh rapid fired pizza i race my flag fsm customs showbiz racing graphics and abiding love memorial earns uh bj mcleod motorsports 
And I think that's it. Oh, and also thanks to Joe Gibbs Racing tonight for helping me out. That's Logan Helton in the eight machine getting another win for himself here at the Charlotte Roval. Congratulations. And hopefully we get to talk to you next week at Kansas. Yeah, thank you. Well, Warren, it was a blast to watch all these drivers put on the best show that they can. And once again, the BJ McLeod guys dominant up front and one, two, like they've been doing almost all season long. Yeah, and they did an excellent job tonight just running their race and doing what they need to do. And as a team, that's that's all you can really ask for. So good on them for getting that one-two finish there. And uh, heck of a job for putting on a battle that we had at the, near the end of the race. Well, now we're at our post-race wind down. Uh, Warren, any final thoughts, though, on this race? No, it's just a good, a good solid, uh, rapid-fire pizza Grand National Series, as they always are here in FRN. They put on another great show. The round of 12 is done. We'll have the numbers on who will be in the round of eight uh, for next week. Um, we do not have them officially just yet as they're still trying to figure out where Roger Gregory will be. If Carson Bowers made it in, they're still trying to get the points uh, ready for there. But next week, we'll be at Kansas starting the round of eight here for the rapid-fired piece of National Series. And they're continuing on with more action there. Last time we got to watch Kansas, it was a blast to watch as they kept on putting on a better and better show. We're excited to watch that. But for us at the Flat Out Racing Network... Our action continues on with the weekend as tomorrow we've got even more racing action. We got the Veterans of Foreign Wars Cup Series. They're going to be here at the Roval again, as well as we're going to have the FTF Grand National Series. They're going to be at Charlotte putting on a show just at the Oval Course. So two great series, two great races to be watched and seen tomorrow night. But uh, Warren, thank you for coming in tonight and uh, being able to be in the booth with me. Yeah, no problem. Well, for myself, Sam Dyer, and for Warren Keith, thank you for watching another presentation of the Flat Out Racing Network here on our YouTube page. Like we said, more racing action over the weekend. Can't wait to watch more of it. Round number eight starts up next week for the Rapid Fire National Series, and they're going to be at Kansas. Can't wait to see it, and I hope you all have a great rest of your night. Oh.